Thank you, Ethan, again. I think we'll see uh, together a, l a lot of time today. <laughs> Welcome, uh, Patrick uh, and uh, Sylvain. Um, we have a very, uh, very, very, uh, sorry, I start in English. <laughs> interesting subject <laughs> about uh, about quantum it's quantum for defense and space uh, and um, you have collaboration uh, you you work together how long have AD and onera been interesting in quantum technology and in what fields uh, sensor communication quantum computing or all of them um, maybe I will start, and uh, Sylvain, I'm sure, will uh, will complete with uh, how Honera is uh, involved in uh, in quantum technologies for many and many years. Uh, but in fact, uh, you know, uh, the Defense Innovation Agency was created only in uh, September 2018. So uh, I, I must answer, we are interesting since the beginning. Uh, but seriously speaking, uh, as I said, we the Ministry of the Armed Forces uh, is interested in quantum technologies for many years, we encourage, we support uh, projects for, for many years with uh, the academics, with the industry. Uh, but uh, we, we must admit that uh, we, we faced uh, an inflection point in 2020. Uh, further to to um, parliamentary commission, uh, the, the we, we produced a report edited by a uh, French deputy, uh, Miss uh, Paula Forteza. Uh, with uh, many proposals, we, this report uh, was named uh, Quantique, uh, le, le virage technologique que la France ne manquera pas. So quantum, uh, let's say, the, the, the technological gap that France won't miss. Uh, further to this uh, report on many proposals, there is a huge work between many ministries, uh, research, economy, armed force, uh, some services of the prime minister, uh, some research on technical organization, and uh, we came to the result of a very ambitious uh, national strategy for quantum technology, uh, part of the French investment plan called France 2030. And uh, this strategy encompasses, uh, in fact, uh, many, many uh, topics. Uh, development of uh, NISC uh, computers and simulators, development of uh, large-scale quantum computers, uh, uh, post crypto uh, communication, uh, quantum communication, uh, um, enabling technologies, and also action on the ecosystem, on education, on materials, on infrastructure. And the Ministry of the Armed Force is uh, fully part, in fact, of this strategy. But um, we, we have also our, an additional uh, specific roadmap uh, because there is some areas where uh, Nobody will invest if the French Ministry of the Enforce didn't go, does not go in. And there is some area where we have to invest in order to move faster. And to sum up my priorities, in fact, on our priorities, first, our first priorities is uh, quantum sensors, because uh, we may face potential disruption in a very short time frame. Our second priority is on post crypto. Uh, post quantum crypto uh, because we have to protect our, uh, our information and if i have to speak about uh, uh, quantum computing uh, we must admit that uh, quantum computer will exist even without the french ministry of, of the armed force uh, but that does not mean we didn't do anything on this field because we have to be prepared so we we are really involved in uh, how we will are going to use uh, this kind of computers uh, so we, we use simulators, we, 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 we try to, to, to look on what kind of use case, what kind of algorithm we will have to, uh, to, to we, we may implement on this kind of computer, for example, for simulation. That will be my uh, quick answer. And <laughs> Sylvain? So if I may complete, so yes, indeed, Onera has been working for almost 20 years in uh, quantum technologies and with the support of uh, DGA and then uh, IED now. And um, especially as uh, a product we have been developing uh, is uh, uh, lies in the field of quantum sensing. And it's a, it's a cold atom gravimeter technology. So, and here I wanted to bring maybe a slightly different note uh, uh, with respect to what we have been hearing before about 
because yeah, of course, uh, the quantum computing is definitely very exciting for this uh, uh, second quantum revolution. But um, quantum sensing uh, also holds uh, a lot of promises, uh, especially for defense and space, but uh, but not only and. And some uh, products are, are already mature. And so this, uh, for example, a quantum gravimeter that we have been developing at Onera for uh, 20 years is now uh, like a, a mature product which can go in an aircraft or in a, in a, in a ship of the Navy. Uh, uh, next uh, week, our prototype will fly uh, above, uh, above uh, Greenland, for example, to monitor uh, uh, ice melting or uh, underground structures from an aircraft. Um, and it definitely already brings a quantum advantage. And so, of course, here we're not talking about uh, entanglement and this kind of stuff, we, but uh, quantum technologies can also bring some advantages uh, uh, through different uh, doors or, or, or windows, if you want. And uh, for example, in quantum sensing, one great uh, advantage that you have if you use atoms, as we do, so they are the same atoms as uh, Pascal used for their qubits, but we are using them for sensing. So what we do, we, we make a, a cloud of cold atoms and we let them fall under gravity. And then with laser pulses, uh, we use the fact that each atom behaves as a wave. This is quantum physics. And with laser pulses, we create two different paths for each atom. Each atom will follow the two paths at the same time. This is very, very quantum, right? And the phase difference between these two paths is a very precise measure of the gravity field, so the force that attracts the atoms towards the center of the, of the Earth. And the quantum advantage here is that every we use rubidium atoms, and every rubidium atom in the universe are the same. The properties, for example, the frequency between the, the two levels of the hyperfine uh, uh, ground states of the rubidium atoms, it's a very precise frequency, and it never changes. It, in, a, in, a, in a century or a century ago, we know, or we at least we strongly believe, if we believe in quantum physics, that it was exactly the same frequency. And so if your measurement is related to this frequency, it means you do not need to calibrate your sensor anymore. Those sensors are self-calibrated, and that's the case of this uh, gravimeter, for example, and that's already an operational advantage as compared to their best classical counterparts, which drift over time, as uh, while the, the, the quantum sensors uh, do not. And uh, so, just to illustrate the application of this technology, why do we want to measure the gravity field uh, with an aircraft or aboard a boat. Well, we do this again for the, the, the French Ministry of Defense and the CHOM, Service Hydrographique et Oceanographique de la Marine. So those, those guys are building, uh, are making maps, uh, especially uh, uh, of, the, of the oceans. And they're very interested in making gravity maps. Uh, for example, if, uh, if you're uh, in the ocean and you're kind of navigating across a mountain and under sea, then the gravity signal would be very different as if you are uh, above some uh, flat surface or, or some uh, deep uh, cave. Or, uh, or so it, the signal depends on the underground structure. And so if you have a map of that, and then imagine you're a submarine or something that has no GPS access and wants to know where it is on the Earth, well, if this, uh, if this carrier has a, has a gravimeter and a gravity map, when it detects a strong signal, and it has a map. It can a map. It can say, well, maybe I, uh, given that I'm detecting this strong signal, I'm probably on top of this underground mountain, which means I know exactly where I am uh, uh, in, the, in the ocean. And this, without any external signal as a GPS would need, without also the need of uh, emitting ultrasound to probe uh, the, the, the under the, 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 the bottom of the ocean. Here we just letting atoms fall and see how they fall uh, through these uh, quantum effects. Yeah. Thank you, really interesting. Um, Patrick, IED has an open innovation unit to help fund startup. For example, you have invested in the startup Pascal. Uh, can you tell us what is the role of IED in this investment? Uh, it's not only on quantum, but uh, can you tell, tell uh, a bit about that? 
So, in fact, the, um, the main mission of the defense, uh, the Open Innovation Unit within uh, the, the Defense Innovation Agency, uh, the, their main mission is to detect uh, product, solution, equipment, ID, uh, develop outside the defense world, uh, and bring this uh, solution, this ID, uh, to, to, to military uh, use case. Uh, looking at this uh, solution, uh, both uh, as uh, opportunity, but also as threats. Um, to we call this kind of project uh, uh, innovation acceleration project, and to, to, to support, in fact, the, this kind of project, we, we need a set of tools. Uh, sometimes we need just to, 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 to make relationship be, between a, a company and a, a technical expert, an operational expert, a test center. Uh, of course, m most of the time we, we need to support this project with money. It could be grants, it could be contracts. Uh, but sometimes, in fact, uh, the, the, the solution, the, the technology is of the most interest but is not mature enough for our, our use case and uh, in such a case we are really convinced that the best solution is to accompany the company the, 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 the company uh, in uh, with private equity uh, in fact in order to keep an eye on the on the solution and to have access to the technology at the right time for us uh, that's the reason what, why we, we created in fact uh, an investment fund called uh, Fonds Innovation Defense. Um, that, that's the first reason. Uh, another reason, in fact, to, to, to explain the, the, the creation of uh, such a, a fund uh, is to struggle against, in fact, the, the lack of investment uh, in a defense company and in deep tech company, uh, because uh, the investments are higher, because the return on investment is longer. Uh, we, we really faced a, a lack on, of investment, and uh, we, we really expect to, to, to have a, a leverage effect, in fact, uh, with our uh, Fonds Innovation Defense. And uh, as you said, we, we invest uh, on uh, deep tech solution, dual use, dual use solution. Uh, we, we request the company to have a, 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 a private market, and a first pri private market, uh, and we make investment uh, in uh, energy component and quantum uh, companies. And uh, we created the fund in uh, 2021, and our two first investments, in fact, were uh, in uh, two uh, uh, quantum technology companies. As you mentioned, uh, Pascal, with his uh, cold, item, uh, cold atom solution. And also, the same years, uh, we invest also in uh, Candela uh, with his uh, photon uh, solution, because we are convinced that we, we will have to, to rely uh, on this uh, kind of company, with this kind of solution. We don't have to rely only on one solution. Uh, and we have to accompany uh, the, the development of such companies. It's complicated to choose one, actually. Um, the Onera just launched uh, the Vulcan, Vulcan Research Project in May with Eviden, uh, the new name of Atos. Uh, the startup Colibri TD, uh, funded by ID2. Uh, the objective is to build the first hybrid platform to study the complex nonlinear phenomena of combust combustion. It is an ambition uh, project. Can you explain it uh, to us? Huh? Yes, sure. So, um, <clears throat> so as Patrick said, we're we're not trying to build our own quantum hardware, but we want to be ready to use it when when it will uh, be there. And so, this Vulcan project uh, is has been built uh, uh, well around this philosophy. And here's a topic of interest: is combustion which obviously has a lot of uh, applications uh, in, in defense. And Onera has been working on combustion with classical simulations for a long time. And here's a goal, of course, is to assess uh, well, what would be the advantage or would there be any advantage in using a quantum machine, a quantum uh, co computer, to uh, simulate uh, this. So we will we'll try to, to, to go st step by step. And so in this project, we will simulate uh, so 1D equations of a laminar uh, flame, uh, so very simple and basic differential equations, but with, uh, with, with quantum algorithms, and so Colibri today will, uh, will be here to help uh, uh, writing those quantum algorithms, and Atos uh, evident to, to provide uh, well, their, uh, their tools for implementing those uh, quantum algorithms on their uh, machines. So it's a bit hardware agnostic at this point, which is why we're not 
we haven't already decided on which uh, which kind of uh, technology we will uh, will be the best to implement those algorithms. Uh, so it's also part uh, uh, part of the study. And so we really go step by step. Um, first, we'll try to see if uh, we can well if there is any advantage in using a, like NISC era machine, so noisy intermediate scale quantum computers, which is more or less what we expect to have available as hardware is uh, near to, to, to medium term. And of course, as the question is whether we will need a fault tolerant uh, computer uh, for, for this or not is, uh, is, still, is still open. So this is the kind of stuff we, we, we plan to study uh, in this project. Um, yeah, and to go progressively step by step. Okay. Uh, for both of you, can we say that quantum in all its form is important in the stake of the race of for new space? So should I? Um, so yes, of course, there are uh, uh, several applications uh, of uh, quantum technologies for, for space. Uh, one that I have in mind, because we're working on it at, at Onera also, is uh, quantum gravimetry again, but this time from a satellite. So why would you want to do that from a satellite? It's for, uh, well, to monitor, uh, for example, climate change. Global warming effects will, will induce, you know, changes of mass, then at the scale of uh, hundreds of kilometers, for example, uh, uh, underwater, uh, which kind of uh, evaporates, uh, well, water underground, which evaporates, or glaciers, which melts down, etc., will, will induce a, a new repartition of mass around the, around the globe. And this you can track with satellites. And there are already uh, satellites in orbit which are exactly doing this with classical gravimeters, uh, which are very good already, uh, but which can have some drifts in the long term. And so a next generation of uh, quantum, of, of gravimeters that would be quantum based, uh, well, could uh, allow to, to kind of compensate for the slow drifts in the long terms using uh, cold atoms again. So that's one application. And another that I have in mind is about quantum communications, which is another like big pillar of those uh, qu quantum technologies. And here, for example, an idea would be that a satellite could uh, share uh, a quantum state, for example, uh, a pair of uh, entangled uh, photons mm -hmm. um, between two different ground stations. And then those two different ground stations, based on this resource from the satellite, would be able to generate a perfectly random uh, key which could then be used uh, to distribute a message between the two in a perfectly secure uh, way. And this, again, based on the uh, advantage of quantum mechanics. So here it's a, another principle of quantum mechanics which brings the advantage. It's basically the fact that w when you do a measurement on a single particle, you necessarily disturb it. And so if a spy, roughly speaking, tries to do to to, to spy on you, he has to make, or she has to make a measurement, and this will disturb the signal, and you'll be uh, able to, to detect it. It cannot, for example, just take 1% of the signal and make his own measurement, as would as he could do for a classical channel. Yeah. If you send really single particles, then he will be uh, detected, and so that's yet another example of what quantum mechanics can bring to, to technologies. Patrick? Yes, uh, it's clear that there is a lot of expectation uh, of, uh, of uh, what quantum te technology could uh, uh, imply, uh, imply uh, for, for space uh, development. Uh, Sylvain uh, uh, described two, two use cases, uh, fully supports uh, the, the interest of uh, quantum communication, uh, and I'm sure that we will have a result uh, quicker with uh, the, the kind of use case he described for secure and long-range communication between uh, satellite and uh, ground, uh, optical ground run, uh, optical ground station. Um, in addition, we, we may also uh, mention that uh, with uh, some uh, with a new space uh, growing up, uh, we have access to to a lot of data, uh, radio frequency data, observation data, and so on. And we have to face the issue of the exploitation of this huge amount of data. And there is a lot of uh, expectation also uh, regarding the, the, the way uh, quantum computing uh, will help us to face this uh, this issue. Uh, but to be honest, if I, if I I would like to, to, to emphasize that uh, quantum technologies 
um, uh, could be a game changer in many areas. And if I add to to, to point out my, uh, my, my first expectation, I, I won't have uh, answers by space, uh, but for example, by uh, navigation. Uh, uh, there is a lot of, of expectation uh, in the navigation area with uh, atomic clocks, uh, with uh, um, inertial navigation solution, uh, low volume, uh, very stable, uh, not subject to jamming. Uh, and the, the first use case may not probably be in space, but more you know, in the submarine environments. Uh, and uh, another example of uh, really my first priority on expectation uh, will have been on uh, electronic warfare. Um, with, uh, for example, spectrum analyzer uh, capable of uh, very large bandwidth, uh, instantaneous detection, so uh, a, a very high uh, uh, probability uh, of interception. Uh, that, that will be the, the two main area of interest I will have mentioned. But uh, clearly, there is also a lot of expectation in space area. Yeah. Yeah, security. Uh could be uh, really interesting in the next year. Thank you very much, Patrick and Sylvain. Uh, and uh, continue.